And joining me in studio now is Mr. James Nelson. He is the CEO of Solar 3D, stock symbols SLTD. Uh, Jim, good to see you again. Good to be here, Don. Thanks for having me. Well, Jim, you know, you are definitely a 21st century guy. I see that you've uh, started a blog. Tell us about that. Well, you know, we've had a lot of people talk to us about uh, our opinions on various things having to do with green energy. And of course, we're really focused on our new three-dimensional solar cell. But there's a lot of things in our, in our mission, in the, feel, in the feeling of mission that we have about what we're doing that have to do with commenting on public policy, innovation, where the industry is going, and so forth. That's why we're doing it, and so people will be able to see what well, we think. Well, you certainly made no uh, secret on this program about your, you know, your feelings about the political aspect of it, and I do appreciate that. Now, something that's kind of intrigued me is we've been following your company the last several weeks. Uh, you're going through a process, as you say, to tighten up your solar cell. Um, can you describe how that's going and how that's going to make your, your product uh, you know, more towards what we're trying to uh, arrive sure, at? Sure, sure. In the early days of when we started the conversation about what we ought to do with solar, uh, recognizing that there was a lot of inefficiency in this traditional solar technology, uh, we started what we call looking for leaks in the technology. So we wanted to plug those leaks. It starts with uh, the two major places where you lose efficiency. One is on the surface where there's so much reflection that comes off of the solar cell. We wanted to start by plugging that leak and mm -hmm. by designing a optical element, light collectors we call them, on the top, which will essentially eliminate uh, the reflection. And like I said before, it's a, we see it as a predator of light. If light touches it, we're going to suck it down into the second place where we've really been wanting to focus, and that is in our three-dimensional photovoltaic structure underneath the surface, where once we capture that light and take it down, it's going to bounce around until the photons knock, uh, knock the electrons loose, and we essentially suck all the energy out of the sunlight. And uh, from there, if you think about it as a Pareto curve, we look at those two as being the primary places, and then there are a lot of other places where uh, efficiency is lost in traditional solar. And we're looking at our new re-engineered three-dimensional solar cell to be able to eliminate all of those leaks, if you will. Uh, of course, at one point, at some point, it becomes a question of diminishing returns, and you find out if it's not economical to plug the last leak. But we think that doing it in this process will get us close to that magic th um, theoretical maximum of uh, the energy we can get out of a yeah, solar cell. The, the, uh, the science of this is just fascinating. Now, the last time you were here, you were mentioning that you were going to be seeking a manufacturing partner. Uh, what kind of partner are you looking for, and how's, how's the whole uh, arrangement going to work? Well, one of the things that we, of course, we have two, two objectives. One is to get the most efficient possible solar cell, and the second one is to make it cheaper to make. Mm -hmm. uh, if you combine those two, you come at the the cost problem from two angles. And so our objective here is to make it as cheap as possible and to design it so it can be made. What we'd like to make it on is traditional semiconductor manufacturing machines. Well, if we can, and, and we can, frankly, but when we do, there are a couple of things that that accomplishes. One is the technology for semiconductor manufacturing was perfected 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's done nothing but get better. And uh, essentially, a a solar cell is a diode, and as long as we design the size and shape of that diode correctly, we'll be able to make it on these high-speed semiconductor machines. So working out problems with the process or with the machines is not going to be an issue. There, there it aren't going to be a lot of bugs to deal with. And the second thing is also critical, and that is that there's not going to be a lot of uh, capital investment in the whole manufacturing process. So the type of manufacturer, the type of partner we're going to be looking for is someone who sees manufacturing new solar cells as a possible extension to their line. And secondly, somebody who has semiconductor equipment. Um, there are a lot of people who come to mind who probably come to your mind as well. Well, Jim, about 30 seconds left, but I know that next in your queue is the design of your optical light collectors. Uh, what's the progress on that? We're getting pretty close. I think in the next several weeks, might be as little as eight weeks, we'll be able to make an announcement that we've got the design down for the light collectors. And after that, it's a matter of calculating what the increase in efficiency of our solar cell relative to traditional will be, and that'll come out shortly after that. So that's our progress. 
It's an always education when I have you on the program, Jim. Again, Jim Nelson, Solar 3D, SLTD is a stock symbol. Thanks for the update. Thanks, Don.